Hi, I'm Dan Garino. I'll be your guide in the process of converting your truck to 89 to 93 Cummins Power Dodge with the bicycle trailer. Got your with the transmission. A couple of things to keep in mind. You have the proper tools to do the job. Watch the Look at the rest of the Do not attempt to install this transmission or take the old one out. gloves when handling chemicals and take your time. We tell people a first time installation could take up to 15 hours. In the shop we usually have it done in less than a day. But we've done a lot. This will be your first one. We pull this truck in the shop and we'll go from there. We're ready to start the installation of the 4500 transmission in this 93 truck. Installation is basically the same from 89 to 93. There is some year model differences. They're fairly minor. The biggest difference is 89 it has different frame and cross member, although all our components will fit. And it has a mechanical speedometer instead of an electric speedometer. Before starting your installation, check over your kit to make sure all the components are there. There's a complete list. On your invoice. We supply parts appropriate to the year. Our conversion is designed to install in trucks with stock components. If you use a different clutch or you have power takeoff that needs to be installed or other things like that that can affect the installation, that's your responsibility to make them fit. The first part of the conversion that needs to be done is remove the seat. If it's a club cab or a fixed truck, the seat can be unbolted and just flipped back. If it's a regular cab, you have to remove the seat from the vehicle. We'll put this truck up on the lift, show you where the four studs and nuts that retain the seat are, and then we'll put it down and start. Seat removal on 89 to 93 is very simple. On each side, there's two studs attached to the seat track. They come through the floor, a nut with an attached washer. The bolts or studs are located inside this rail here. It's a reinforcement rail. This here is your transfer case skid plate bracket and your emergency brake bracket is here. So just find those two spots and your bolts are right above them. If you come from an area of the country that has a lot of uh, corrosive salt, you may have a little trouble getting them off. Generally, they'll just spin right off. When you put your truck up in the air, make sure it's on a lift or safely blocked up on jack stands. These trucks are heavy that you won't feel too good if one falls down on you. First thing we do when we get them up on the lift, we check the, check the axle U joints, see if there's any rust or binding. We check the wheel bearings. We look in beside the wheel, see if there's brake wear, check the tie rods, check the U joints, both front and rear. We'll check them again once they're out. We look for leaks. We check for broken springs, broken shock, leaky wheel seals, loose wheel bearings. If you can grab your wheel, tire and wheel assembly and move it back and forth, you have loose wheel bearings. And one of the most common problems we see on these trucks, other than the transmission, is the rear differential. The differential bearing on the ring gear side, which is the passenger side, has a tendency to spin. We manufacture a tool that will retrue an axle, the axle bore housing. If yours is damaged, it's a good idea every 100 to 125,000 miles, completely rebearing the rear axle on the Cummins Power Dodges with Model 70 axle. Check for pinion seal leaks, 
differential cover leaks, parking brake cables that are sticky, damaged, or inoperative, broken wire to your right there to your uh, anti lock brake unit. That wire will frequently break or the connector will corrode inside the housing. On any electrical connection, we recommend you use dielectric grease. First stuff on your conversion is to remove your seat and floor mats, any radios or anything else that's in the way. Then remove the sill plates, their Phillips head screws. Floor per side. That one stripped. Just run across one that's stripped. Lift the plate up. Put a little tension on the screw and it will come out. Then we remove the shift knob. The transfer case shift lever in all years is an 11 16th lock nut. Remove the shift knob and remove the lock nut. We'll reuse both of those. The transfer kit or the transmission uses a 14 millimeter lock nut. We then need to remove the transfer case and transmission shift boots. We will reuse both of those and all of the hardware. On earlier model trucks, there's just this boot. On the 92s and 93s, there's two boots. The lower boot may be retained either with 5 16 head screws or Phillips head screws. The transfer case upper shift lever is held up with two 9 16 bolts. They may, have, may or may not have nuts in addition to being threaded into the lower shift lever. Or 9 16 head. Then, the, after the shift lever is off, you can remove the lower boot that will be removed. Then, we remove the transmission. The boot. This one uses 5 16 hex headed screws. Remove the four screws that retain the lower. Boot to the floor pan. These are 5 16 hex headed screws, or they could be a Phillips head screw. The transmission shift lever comes in two models. This particular one is held on with two metric bolts or 13 millimeter heads removed. Now, depending on the year of the truck, there may be two bolts that hold your original shifter in, or like this one, is usually 18 millimeter and they just unscrew. This is built trucks. The rug or carpet, or in this case a mat, is more or less a square hole. In the Mexican trucks, it's a five inch round hole. In the Mexican trucks, we use a hole saw and cut a five inch hole out of the carpet from here. On the U.S. trucks, we just take a straight edge, measure back about four inches from the back edge of your existing hole. We'll draw a line there, and then we'll cut this piece out. We'll, we'll glue this piece back in here where the shifter is currently after we install the transmission. And then the mat... There's different holes in the floor pans of these trucks. And you can see on this one that the hole is offset. The shifter's more to the driver's side and the passenger side. Because these aren't stamped really accurately, it's impossible to tell you that you can measure X number of inches back. But we found that in all cases, with the newer model transmissions, the 8130 and 8131, 
If we cut the floor back just in front of the rubber mat here, we We've cut the floor out. We'll reach under here, disconnect the reverse light wire off the switch on the transmission. Sometimes you have to pry that off. That one was a pretty easy one. Now we'll be able to put the trans or the truck into the air, pull the transmission out. And we'll put the truck up into the air. We want to block the clutch pedal. Can use a piece of wood or this is actually a steering wheel lock to lock it up in place so that it can't inadvertently be stepped on if somebody has to get into the cab while the clutch slaves on. In this section, we will show the differences for installing an older model fixed shift power MD4500 transmission in the 89 to 93 Dodge. Most of the procedures are exactly the same. There is a couple different ones that'll be shown here. It doesn't have the threaded uh, shifter connection. You have to cut the floor back about an inch into this rubber mat. The actual distance will vary depending upon the size of your floor cutout. Different rear trucks and where they're assembled, there'll be different size holes here. But if you go about an inch back into this rubber mat, it's about right. We've already drilled two three eighths holes to start our saber saw in. We're just going to start with removing the transfer case skid plate. All the factory bolts on these are 7 16 bolts with 5 8 heads and 11 16 nuts. In this case, Supported the skid plate on the jack. This one's bent up enough. We'll probably have to pry it off, but we'll let the jack down and it'll come. There we go. Next, we drain the, tra the transfer case. The drain plug on the transfer case is on the back side. Uses a 9/16 square socket or a 9/16 open wrench. While the transfer case is draining, but that oil looks nice and clean. Uh, we'll remove the drive lines. The rear drive line is held in with hex head cap screws with 516 heads on them. With a plug cab, we also have to remove the center bearing assembly with the front drive line. That uses a 5 8 head with 11 16 nuts. We have to remove the front drive line now. On 92 and 93 trucks, the cap screws that hold the transfer case output flange to the drive shaft are grade 8 7 16 They look identical to the bolts that hold your cross member and skid play in, but they're grade 8 with 6 lines on the head instead of a grade 5 with 3 lines on the head. Older trucks use grade 5 all the way around, but if you have a newer truck, you want to make sure that nobody's 
mixed up the bolts in the past and used a grade eight bolt here and grade five bolts on the drive line. The drive shaft is held in with three eighths headed grade eight bolts at the front end. Pull on the drive line and pop it off the flange yoke. This one's pretty loose. We'll end up having to rebuild this drive line. It has a rear main oil seal leak. Awful dirty. We'll fix the rear main while we're doing the transmission job. Drain plug in the transmission. Most of them are 3 a square. While that's draining, we're going to disconnect the speedometer wires. Uh, 90 through 93 used the electronic speedometer. 89 used uh, re regular cable controlled, cable operated speedometer. We'll disconnect the transfer case indicator light. Switch wires from on top of the back of the transfer case. In case wire. Speedometer drive wire. Transfer case vent holes. The transfer case linkage. It's held on the shift rod is held to the transfer case with a car key. Kind of tough to get to, but you get that straightened out and pulled out. And then it's the bracket, the shifter is attached to is bolted to the transmission with three three A's. Quartz thread bolts with 916th head. Transfer case rod, you want to keep these little washers. We'll reuse them on the installation. We do not reuse the bolts we take out of the shift bracket. This unclips from the frame, is depending on the year, maybe in different locations. Just unclip it before reassembly and make sure it's free or you're going to have transfer case oil. You want to remove the transfer case next. There's six 3 8 hex head, they're 3 8 nuts with a 916 hex head on them. Take those off, have your transfer case put it on a jack, and it'll slide right back. Some of these nuts have to be removed with the box end wrench. But you can get some of them with a 916 wobble socket, like I just used there. That was the last one. We already took the other ones out. If there's no oil leak from the seals of the transfer case or transmission, there will not be any oil that comes out. If one of the seals were leaking, you'd have a puddle of oil on the floor by now. Transfer case is removed. There is a little oil in here so one of the seals is leaking on nice rusty stuff. Take the spline coupler off, inspect for excessive wear. That one's kind of marginal. We will reuse that spline coupler. The next step is to support the transmission so we can remove remove the two nuts that hold the transmission to this support plate. The 15 sixteenths. We will not reuse those. The bolts, the flat washers, and the nuts can be discarded. Then the two bolts and nuts that this support plate attaches to the cross member with. We will reuse those. So don't throw those ones out. Then we can jack the transmission up a little bit. 
Uh, on the first one of these jobs we did, we made a temporary wood plate to fit the bottom of the transmission, but it worked so good we've used it ever since. Slip that up in there. Drop the jack down. Disconnect the wires from the brackets on the transmission. Place your transmission jack under the transmission. Jack the transmission off the cross member. These transmissions are pretty heavy. You want to use an actual transmission jack for it. Don't use a floor jack or think that you can get it out just by hand. You'll probably end up ruining your clutch or worse. You're breaking your ribs or your arms or something. Maintain transmission safely on your jack. Then we'll take this plate out. Proceed with the removal of the cross member. That was a nut I had just put a couple threads back on it to get it out of my socket. Off this plate, remove the plate. A lot of nice pine needles. These pushings, as you can see, are pretty well shot. We'll end up replacing these. Just about any of these trucks now, unless they're very low mileage or the pushings have been replaced, you're going to need these. Toss those in the garbage and put this in the parts wash. Come with 716 bolts, 11 16 nuts, and there are 5 8 hex head on the bolt. Depending where it was assembled, it may be the bolt head is up or it may be the bolt head is down. When I reassemble them, I'll put these ones with the bolt heads down so you don't get caught on them. I'd recommend you do that on your own. These ones here, I'll usually put them bolt head on top of the frame rail. It really doesn't make much difference probably in the end. We'll zip these off with an impact and we'll just leave uh, one nut on each end partially threaded until we're ready to actually remove it. Some of these cross members will fall right off. Some of them won't. This is one that's They're fairly heavy, so you want to be careful taking it off. Yeah, it loose and drop this away. So what's reversible, you just have to remember on installation that these two holes where your skid plate mounted to, they go to the front of the truck. It's pretty dirty, we'll run this through our parts washer. You want to clean any rust and grease and anything else that's on it before you reassemble it. Put this aside, we'll take the transmission out next. Lower bolts, which have three quarter heads on them, can be removed with an impact. Due to the casting of the transmission, the upper one's a bit more difficult. You can get them with an open end wrench. We do not reuse these bolts to clean the transmission. We supply new grade 8 bolts with the conversion kit. Before our bolts are out, transmission should come out. We jack up just a little bit on it, try to break it free. Now 
we cut our hole properly with the floor, we should be able to get this out by twisting it a little bit and dropping it down. If you cut the hole farther back and you're using one of the older transmissions, you can slide it back all the way. Most trucks don't have this little shield on anymore. It's broke off. This one surprisingly still has it. We will reuse that if it's there. Then we remove the clutch slave cylinder, which is retained by two half inch nuts. Loosen them up alternately a little bit at a time. for damage to the boot. This one's been caught, but it doesn't look like it's put a hole in it. And look for fluid that would indicate a leak. That one looks okay, so we'll just put that out on the side. Next, we will remove the muffler clamp. This attached to a bracket on the grill housing. That's use a 916 socket. The bell housing, which held in by eight bolts, all of nine sixteenth inch heads. Last bolt comes out, the bell housing can fall right off. There's only two dowel pins that hold it in place then. You want to keep a hold of it. Sometimes they stick too. You don't want to take a chance. 5 16 bolts with half inch heads that hold it in place. Mark them. Each bolt with a number in the proceed in an alternate fashion, like you were going to be removing a wheel. And we're going to loosen each bolt a quarter of a turn alternately at a time. This takes a little bit of time, but if you want to use the clutch, this is a critical part of disassembly. I use an input shaft from a destroyed gut tray for my transmission alignment tool. We have plastic ones available, or you can cut one off your old transmission. If you want to put that in there to support the disc when the bolts are finally loosened up. You can go one quarter turn on each bolt in an alternate pattern. Just follow the numbers that you've marked. And this does take again a few minutes, but it's Worth it if you don't want to buy a new clutch. You zip them off with an impact. 
you got to ruin this clutch cover, and it's a pretty expensive thing to have to buy a clutch to save 10 minutes worth of work. Once the tension's off all the bolts, finish on threading them. You want to leave one third the top in, hold the thing up in place until you're ready to actually physically remove it. These are very heavy. You want to be extremely careful removing these. You don't end up wearing one. Got uh, just one bowl left holding it in place. There. Again, these are very heavy. This flywheel needs to come off to repair the rear main seal that's leaking. If you're going to leave the flywheel in place, clutch pilot pushing here needs to be pulled. We use a blind hole bearing puller to pull that. Since we're going to remove this particular flywheel, we're just going to take the whole thing off and pop it out once it's off. The flywheel bolts here, 18 millimeter socket seems to fit best. Uh, real heavy on this flywheel. You want to leave one bolt in until you're actually ready to take the flywheel off the engine. Take seven out and leave one partially threaded in place. Ah. 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 Holding the flywheel firmly in, against the crankshaft, take the last bolt out, and then take it off the engine. It's pretty heavy, so be very careful. And there we have our rear main seal leak right here. Modifying the NV4500HD transmission. Modification of the 4500 transmission starts with shortening the bearing retainer to allow clearance for the clutch hub. Without being shortened, the clutch hub will jam against the bearing retainer and make so your clutch will not disengage. We'll, we will remove the bearing retainer short. If you purchase a transmission from us, the bearing retainer is already shortened. If you are supplying your own transmission, it is extremely important that you shorten your stock bearing retainer nose by 0 0.300 inches to 0 0.350 inches. That will allow sufficient clearance for the clutch hub. The bearing retainer is held on with four 5 16 screws. They have half inch heads. Remove the four bolts. Use a chisel or other suitable tool. We want to put it in right between the bearing retainer and the transmission case. Now we will shorten this on our lathe. You should probably take that to a machine shop. They could be cut with a hacksaw. I wouldn't recommend it, but it can be done. We have to clean up the old or off the old silicone. What we do is install set screws in the threaded holes.
that'll keep dirt and debris from getting into the transmission while we take an air grinder to that silicone. And then we have a input bearing retainer that was damaged in shipping, the nose was broke off. We slip that on to protect the bearing. You can use a rag or anything else that'll just keep dirt out. Then we take a Rolex disc on our air grinder. We've shortened the bearing retainer on our lathe. We're ready to install it. I should mention that the length of these splines and some of the new venture transmissions made in late 98 and early 99 are short, shorter than these. And then we have had cases of the clutch hub actually bottoming out on the spline. And if you have one of those, you're going to have to have your clutch hub machined down to fit. The transmissions we're currently selling do not have that problem. A similar problem may occur if you're installing a double disc clutch. Our conversion is engineered for a stock clutch. If you're installing an aftermarket clutch, particularly a double disc, you may have some interference problem with your clutch hub. Feed a silicone on the flange. Go up higher on the flange around the top oil channel in the bottom oil slot. Put a thin film of silicone grease or Vaseline on the seal to provide initial lubrication. Slip the bearing retainer on. This little nub here, which provides the oil channel inside, goes to the top. Install a four bolt. Tighten them down alternately, then park them to 22 foot pounds. Other modifications required to adapt the transmission to the truck is remove the backup light switch at the 7 8 wrench. We will reuse the gasket. We supply a new switch that will attach directly to the Existing wiring harness. I always put a dab of Loctite on the thread. Just screw that in. That's a 24 millimeter head on that. They don't take a whole lot of torque. If you tighten them too much, you're going to twist it right off. The next step is remove the seal that's inside the transmission right here. There's a spline sleeve that will be reused from your existing transmission transfer case setup and it will hit this seal. The best way to remove that that I have found is with a slide hammer. Make sure that the spring comes out also. Sometimes the spring will fall off the seal, slip down on the splines. You can take a little uh, hook and hook that out of there. You don't want to leave that in. It'll probably fall off and get run through the gears and ruin your transmission. And current production transmissions like this one, prior to installing the transmission in the vehicle, the shift cover has to come off. These four bolts, the three ace heads, just take the four bolts off. And this plastic cover here will come off. The rubber gasket underneath will stay on. You don't have to remove that. If you do, you will have to re-silicone that in. Unlike some transmissions, this cover can be taken off with the shifter in any position. I usually have it neutral when I take it off, uh, but you can have it in force. And then when you go to line the transmission up into the clutch, you can turn the input shaft 
when it's in gear to help you line up the clutch splines to the transmission input splines. The final item that needs to be done before the transmission is, is installed is remove these two bolts or half inch heads on either side of this box on the passenger side of the transmission. Those bolts will not be reused. We supply longer grade 8 bolts with flat washers and lock washers to install your transfer case shifter in that area. Now this is a shifter that we haven't reassembled. It would need to be reassembled before installing it to the transmission. But we supply this piece and this piece that are welded to your existing shift bracket. And then after the transmission is installed in the vehicle, you can bolt that down with the new grade 8 bolts. Like I said, don't install your shifter until after the transmission is installed and resting on the cross member. If you purchased your transmission from us, the transmission modifications shown in this video are already performed except for removing the shift tower to install it in the vehicle. This plate, you will remove this and weld it to your existing shifter. There's instructions in the written uh, pages that tell you how to do that. If you have 89 through 91 with the ungated shifter, the bracket will be a narrower piece here instead of this wide one, which is used with the gated shifter found in 92 and 93 model years. We'll start reassembly by putting the flywheel in the crankshaft. This customer opted for a modified flywheel with a pilot bearing instead of the original bushing. And he's also getting a new clutch. Get the flywheel up on the engine and then try to bolt in part way to hold it, then you can put the rest of the bolts in, tighten them down evenly and alternately to 101 foot-pounds of torque. Installing the flywheel, spray a little brake clean or other suitable cleaner on the surface to remove any oil or fingerprints. It could contaminate the clutch facing. You do the same with the pressure plate. And the clutch disc. Insert your pilot tool into your clutch disc, making sure that the side marked flywheel side is against the flywheel and not reversed. Then put a little Loctite on each of the clutch cover bolts. And this is heavy again. I'm caution. After you get a couple of the bolts started enough to retain the clutch cover, you thread the rest in. Then we'll want to snug each bolt up so it's just starting to touch the cover plate. And from there we will Tighten each bolt alternately and evenly, one quarter turn at a time, to ensure that we don't spring the clutch cover. Tighten up 
right in each bowl, quarter of a turn. Alternately, it will evenly draw the cover plate to the flywheel without springing it. Then when you're done getting it snugged up to the flywheel, torque each bolt to 17 foot-pounds. As we tighten the pressure plate down or clutch cover, every once in a while make sure that your alignment tool is free. If it isn't, it would indicate that the pressure plate is not being drawn on evenly. Then you want to back your bolts off and try again. Brush a little never seize around the alignment dowel to prevent corrosion. Place your clutch fork with the new clutch release bearing that we supply on the clutch pivot in your flywheel housing. Put a little Lactite on every one of the bolts, except the long one that we'll put in later where this the bracket for the clamp here. Place the new flywheel in place. Make sure that lined up on the dowels. Put one bolt in to hold it in. Then put the other six. Leave this hole empty. We'll put that bolt in later in the job. And then after we have these six bolts in, we'll torque them each. Bolt is 33 foot-pounds. We have to attach the clip. The wiring harness is on to the appropriate hole in the bell housing. Some trucks, it's attached down here and some at the upper left one. That down, then we can proceed hand parking. Again, these bolts get torqued to 33 foot pounds. The eighth bolt that goes in this area is left out until the Transmission is just installed and resting on the cross member. Then install the clamp bracket and the clamp to the exhaust pipe. Before assembling the transmission to the bell housing, we have to lubricate Input bearing retainer here with a film of grease. We use black lube plate for this. Any suitable chassis grease is fine. Then your transmission probably came with some grease on the spline. If that grease is clear, not dirty, You can take a rag and just spread it around so there's a thin film. If you're installing a new clutch that we supply, there'll be a package of grease in it if your transmission doesn't have clean grease. You just want to take a little bit and put it on the spline. Now we're going to wipe off the excess. To prevent corrosion between the oven and bell housing and the cast iron transmission, 
I picked another key and put it in this area here. Not right up to the bowl hole because I don't want to get another key down the threads of my bowl. Okay, we slide the transmission forward. And we have to get the nose of the transmission onto the clutch release bearing. Looks like we have to tilt this mod, this transmission down in the back a little. And then your transmission should be in gear. That allows you to turn the output shaft of the transmission to line the transmission splines up. We've got it lined up into the splines there. We just got the uh, clutch release to go onto the input retainer. That can take be pretty tricky sometimes. Just take your time if it doesn't go. Slide the transmission forward. If everything goes right, it should fit right in like that. There should be no gap here, or pretty minimal. Just transmission to line up the bolt holes and insert the four grade eight half inch by two inch bolts that are supplying the kit with Loctite on the threads. After installing the bolts, finger tight, torque them to 70 foot pounds. You want all the bolts in finger tight before, or a little tighter actually. They don't always go in just with your fingers. But not torqued down until they're all threaded most of the way down so you don't have any misalignment problem because there is a little bit of movement that you can get between the bolt holes. And if you put one bolt in and tighten it down, you may not be able to get the other three in without damaging the threads and the bell housing. Place your clutch fork boot in a hole in the bell housing. Making sure you have it in a lip. Lip worked all around the hole. We've put a little bit of grease on the tip of the clutch push rod and also just a small amount at the end of the fork. Feed your push rod and your boot through the hole in the bell housing, making sure that the boot doesn't get caught. If yours is good, you can install the splash shield using the three 516 bolts that were on the original bell housing. Most of these splash shields are broken by the time the transmission needs to be replaced. And they'll just be three little pieces of tin under these bolts. This one has it, so we'll put it down. Then I'll put a little dielectric grease in the reverse light switch wire and attach that to the reverse light switch on the transmission. It's a good time to do that before we jack the transmission up to its final place with the, where it'll be because there is very little clearance to get your hand in. It can also be installed from the top. Number needs to be installed next. Put a couple bolts coated with never seize on the threads in each side of the frame rails. It's helpful if you have another jack to hold this cross member or a helper. Make sure you have the cross member the right way with the two holes, the skid plate towards the front, put the cross member up in place, start a nut 
on the two bolts that you put in either side of the frame rails, hold the cross member up in place. Tighten up a bolt on either side. The cross member. And take your pry bar, put in one of these holes, and you'll have to pry that frame extension down. These other bolts I put in with the heads on the downside. Sometimes those get a little persuasion to go through the hole. Your kit comes with a new transfer case input seal. We primarily include it just for a quality installation. This seal was actually leaking, so we would want to replace it regardless. There's eight bolts that hold this adapter to the transfer case. Three are external, five are internal. The three external ones are easy to get off. Five internal ones are at kind of a tough angle. Pull the adapter off. In addition to the new seal, we supply new gaskets for front and back. This one's kind of stuck on. We want to remove the old gasket, clean any material off that's stuck to the casting prior to the installation of the new or the adapter with the new seal. Okay, it's time to reassemble the transfer case adapter and transfer case. First thing we're going to do is put the seal in. The seal has some sealant around it and there's a black edge here. Put the black edge to the back sides. There's grease inside here. We're going to add a little grease, make sure there's no dirt inside here. This provides initial lubrication for the seal before oil gets splashed up there during operation. Just place the seal inside the bar, take a suitable adapter, drive it until it's flush, make sure neither of the springs fell out, you're all set. We're going to assemble the transfer case adapter to the transfer case. Take a new gasket supplied in the kit, place it on the adapter. We don't want to use any silicone or any type of seal on that. The surfaces are very perfectly machined. Cast iron surfaces, seal is just going to make the job more difficult if it ever has to come apart. It has no function. Put Loctite on every one of the screw threads. Put a couple of the bolts in. The holes are towards the bottom to line it up. Slide the adapter on. Start those screws in a couple threads. And then start the other six screws. Then finish tightening with a torque wrench, 35 to 40 foot pounds. I, I always go over the bolts twice with the torque wrench. There seems to be a little bit of compression with the gasket. This is the original transmission plate that came off the truck. It needs to be modified in this area here for a clearance for the new 4500 case. We have to bevel this at a, about a 45 degree angle. It can be done with a torch or a grinder. We got to take this edge off. We bevel this down on the top side, and on the bottom side, we're going to remove some of this paint with the, the disc grinder. There's a reinforcement quarter inch by half inch 
strip of steel that needs to be welded on here to compensate for the loss of strength that we've taken from this side. The bottom has no clearance problems, only at the top, so we can weld the piece here without interfering at all with the transmission. This piece of steel was supplied in your kit, which is welded on the bottom side. Put it in place like so. Clamp it with a suitable clamp, and then weld. Welded, and it's painting. The plate we welded on is right here. It's on the weld, so it just blends right in. And that will replace or give strength to the front of this plate that we remove by putting the bevel on. We've cleaned out the holes of crusty rubber, knocked the rust off, the new bushings will fit right on there without interference. This is now ready to install. The existing shift rod here has to be replaced with our adjustable shift rod. And the easiest way I found is to just disassemble the shifter. That out. This bushing's worn quite a bit. It'll probably still work. You can see in this area, worn. Original shift rod, which is not reused. Remove the cotter key, pull it out. This bushing, there's a plastic bushing in here that is reused. We will weld this to a adapter plate that we supply, and this cam is removed. We reinstall the tap on these tabs here and you should be able to pry this off. The next step, wire wheel the paint off the back of your original bracket so we get a good weld. We supply two plates, a transmission adapter plate and a reinforcement. Grind the weld on top of the stud, and this plate will fit right over that. There will be a little notch one inch back from the leading edge. That notch goes right to the leading edge here, just an index point. We recommend that you tip this plate five degrees off of perpendicular. That will tilt the shifter a little bit more towards the driver, a little bit easier to grab a hold of, center it in the hole properly. There's dimensions in the written instructions of the angle to put this. Basically, you're gonna weld that to that. Well, this stiffener plate, the original plate, and the transmission adapter plate, making sure that you don't fill in these holes because that cam has to go back into those two holes. To reassemble the shifter, first we have to put the clevis yoke on. This is the front. Right here, this goes towards the back inside the cab. 
I'll put a little rubber lubricant on the uh, pin here. Start that in. Pin goes in from the what would be the back side or towards the driver's side. And then we take the washers that we took off during disassembly, slip those in. The wave washer will put pressure on the uh, clevis yoke to help eliminate rattles. There we go. A bit of anti-seize and cotter pin. Then we take our bracket. I'll put a little rubber lubricant on the cam plate. That slides down like so. And they'll probably need to be tapped in with a hammer. Okay. Then your shifter goes in the inside slot. Put the shifter in. A little rubber lubricant on the Round bushing. And those almost always have to be tapped in. Okay, put the spring on, flat washer on, put a little Loctite on the nut. I'll tighten that down so it hits the shoulder. Now we have to take the new shift rod, put the land I seize on it, and thread that in the yoke. And I usually start, turn it in until the threads are about ready to come out to here. The final adjustment has to be done once the unit's installed in the vehicle. I can feel them coming out the end. So I never see that. Now, when you go to adjust it, the two wheel drive position is against this stop. You want to adjust this rod so when the transfer case is in two wheel drive, it's just forward of that stop where you would have to get into neutral. You'd have to go beyond the stop. But you don't want to adjust it so it's right tight against the stop and two-wheel drive because you have to have a little room for slack when you when you put it into four two-wheel drive. Your four-wheel drive position will be forward, your neutral's about there, your low range is about there. Of course, I have it upside down here for the camera, but remember you're adjusting on the stop on two-wheel drive, just forward of the gate. Place the modified support plate 
on the cross member. We we are reusing the existing hardware. This particular case, we're putting new bushings in. Put the heavy washers onto the bolt and start your nuts. These are 15 16 head on the bolt and also 15 16 on the nut. Tighten those down. tight we want to have some flex they're bottomed out into the shoulder of the bushing we need to have some flex in this plate then we install a new support bracket supplied in the kit with five eighths coarse thread bolt place the support plate up The thin quarter inch plate goes to the bottom. The hole is a little bit oversized, so you can move this bracket around a little bit to line it up with the transmission. We'll tighten down the nuts just to provide a slip fit here so we can move this once we let the transmission down and see exactly where we need it. What we want is for the holes in the upper part of the bracket here to line up perfectly with the holes in the transmission and the weight of the transmission is completely sitting on. The holes line up properly. Tighten your lower bolts. It has to be done before the transmission is dropped because there's insufficient clearance to put a wrench underneath the transmission case when it's down. Drop the transmission down so there's no weight on it. Move it side to side as necessary. Make sure the holes line up properly. And then if necessary, reposition. You may have to loosen these bolts if this bracket moved a little during the final tightening, but if it's all set, hand thread your bolts. Lock tight on the threads. They're 7 16 grade 8 by inch and a half bolts. Now we're going to take these 50 foot pounds. We threaded them in. They thread in easily to this point when the lock washers start to go. After the transmission is bolted down, we can put the eighth bolt in the bell housing. with the bracket for the exhaust clamp. Run that down and then torque it to 33 foot-pounds. Then install the exhaust clamp. We put anti seize on the thread to prevent corrosion. Clamp the kit. It'll only go on one way. 
That's the right way. This alignment dowel hole is not used. If you put it on the other way, turn it around, it won't go over the studs. So you'll know if it's going to go on right or not just because it's going to slip on real easily. Again, you don't need any silicone or sealer around here. These are precision machine surfaces, on both the transmission and transfer case using sealers. Just messes the job up for anybody that ever's got to take it apart. Now we had the spline coupler in the back of the transmission when we assembled the transmission. The easiest way to assemble the transfer case is put the spline coupler in the transfer case and then you can see when you're going to push it in you can see the splines here as they made up. It's hard to do from the angle if you have the spline coupler left on your tranny. So put it on your transfer case. We'll turn this around and jack it up. It should move in pretty easy. It's snug up against the back of the transmission now. We're going to reuse this in good shape the six nuts that retain the transfer case to the transmission. Lock tight those. Some of them are very difficult to get to with this new transmission. You'll end up hand tightening all of them, and a couple of them you're going to hand, they're going to have to be hand tightened all the way on. Now, when you're using Loctite, you don't want to fool around too long as you're putting it together. It won't set up immediately, but it is going to set up and make them hard to put on after a few minutes, so you want to get them right on. And what I do is start the six nuts on and then I'll tighten this nut up and one opposite on it the other side kind of half snug and take the jack out so I have more room to work. You want to tighten these in a crisscross alternate pattern like you would if you were taking a your wheel off your car or pick up or putting it back on so you have even tension on all the studs. Okay, we're going to hook the transfer case accessory wires up. You've got your speedometer drive wire and your transfer case indicator wire. Flip those over the top of the transfer case. This is the one for your speedometer. Now, if you have an 89 truck, instead of a wire, you have a conventional cable. But all the rest of them use electronic. You just snap that on until it clicks. Take your, depending on the year, the position of your vent hose may be different. On this year here, it goes into this bracket on the frame clips onto the cross member brake. And then the last wire is your transfer case indicator wire, wire which you're not going to be able to see up here, but the indicator switch is right up on top. Next, on a club cab pickup, we have to move this bracket here to the back part of the slots if it's not already there. This one looks like it's pretty close, so we'll see how the dry line fits it. The assembled transmission transfer case assembly is about an eighth inch longer with the new bell housing the transmission than your original. So sometimes you have to move this back. It depends where the slotted holes are, where it mounts to the
cross member up above. This particular truck has this cross brace for their camper on it, so it makes it a little hard to see. But we just place the drive shaft up in place. Make sure the U-joint is down into the holes and the tabs are up against it. Put the hold it up with your forearm or a jack or somebody else help you hold it up. And just tighten these two turns to get them on. Now I lock tighted these ones, but if you're in an area that uses a lot of salt, you probably want to use never seize on these particular ones. Um, this upper bracket is adjustable. And I did end up moving this one back just a hair to get it to line up. But they need to be back. The slots have to be all the way towards the back as a rule on these club cabs. Now we're going to put Loctite on the bolts that hold the dry shaft in place to the transfer case output yoke. If you're using our new replacement clamp and bolt kit because your uh, bolt heads are rounded off, they have locking patches on them and you wouldn't need to use Loctite the first time you use them. These are a 5 16 head. And what we are going to do is we're going to snug them up with a little impact and then we'll hand tighten them. You don't need to over tighten them and they're designed to have your wrench slip on them if you try to torque them too tight, but they do need to be snug. In place. Now we'll run up the uh, center bearing bolts. That'll be in place. Of course, if you have a uh, standard cab, you don't have to fool around with this part of the job. But now we're going to install the back half of the rear drive line. There's no external lubrication for this unit. We've already put a little grease in the slip, wheel, slip yoke. We're going to put a little grease on the splines here, some back in the boot. It's the only lubrication this gets. If you live in an area that has a lot of corrosive road salts and things, it's pretty critical that you do this every couple of years or you're going to end up getting your drive shaft splines replaced, which is kind of an expensive deal. Just put that on, work it around. If you told us that you have a club cab when you place your order for your kit, we supplied a new band for this boot. Slip that on like so. And we previously marked the drive shaft, keep it in phase. We've got yellow marks on this particular one. Have a yellow mark here. We just have to line those marks up. Slip it together. I might have heard the air expelling from the uh, slip yoke there. As you push this on, you got to release the air that's trapped in the boot and in the splines. That's easy to do. Just pull that back and purge the air out. Pull this excess grease off. Then you can clamp this band. Should have a tool similar to this to do that, although diagonal pliers will work, I suppose. We 
We'll clamp that. And then she's all set. We'll put on the rear drive shaft clamp and bolts just like we did the front ones. Lock tight the bolts unless it's a new cap, cap and bolt kit. We'll snug them down with the impact and then hand tighten them. Install and adjust transfer case shifter before installing front drive line. Tighten bolts that hold shifter to transmission cover through hole cut and cab floor. There is insufficient room to get a camera up under the truck to, to see the installation of the transfer case shifter. The shifter is installed from the bottom. You can tighten the bolts through the holes that are in the cab floor for the transfer case shifter and uh, the transmission tower. Before installing your front drive line, put a little anti-seize around the inside flange where it meets up against the transfer case for corrosion protection. Lock tight each of your bolts. and install them and tighten them. Clean the area around your transfer case fill plug of any dirt or foreign material that could drop into the transfer case. Use a 916 double square socket or 916 open end wrench to remove the fill plug. And fill the transfer case until oil runs out of the fill hole. Apply anti-seize to the bolts that retain the skid plate. Put these front bolts in, head down. The rear bolts can go in either way. Install the shift stub, making sure that the shift lever lines up into the appropriate notch in the shift rail. If you did not already install the wires to the reverse light switch, now is a good time to do it. It's accessible through the floor here. If you don't do it now, it'll be awful tough to do when everything's put together. Put sealer around the edge of the floor pan. This offset hole in the front goes to the driver's side to clear a uh, duct for the heater. I use silicone on these. Any sealer would probably work. Lift up your floor pan or floor mat. Center the hole in the floor plate around the transmission shift tower. Center punch a hole. Then drill it. And then proceed on from there until all the screws are installed. Take some weather strip adhesive or other suitable adhesive. Put it on the new floor plate. Place the piece of insulation that you cut out from this area in. A little bit more on top. Place the cut piece of your mat or carpet in place. Cut 
carpets come out a lot nicer than these vinyl floor mats because it, they tend to overlap better. And then we put a heavy piece of steel on it so the glue sets. The next step is to install a lower shift boot with the wide side wide slot to the front, center that over the shifter. Then using the original screws, drill into the new floor plate. After installing the four screws, thread the new shift handle on. And tighten that with a 19 millimeter wrench. Install the lower transfer case boot for the 92s and 93s with the gated shifter. The earlier models with the ungated shifter, you would go directly to installing the transfer case shift lever and then the upper boot. Install your transfer case upper shift lever. Depending on the year of the truck, you may have just a bolt or a bolt and a nut, whatever it came with. Reinstall the 916th head. Then install the upper shift boot. Nice clean truck here. And the trim plate. The trim plate uses Phillips head screws on all years. Tighten those down in a minute. We'll go right into installing the transmission shift boot. Reusing the original screws. Thread the new shift knob on so it bottoms out. Install the lock nut. Tighten that down. I usually wait to put this insert in until after I put the seat in, and that just needs to be worked around with a fine screwdriver, a little bit of soap and water on it. Makes it go in a little easier. Then we install the original lock nut, the transfer case shift lever, and it uses an 11 16 wrench to tighten it. Thread on the transfer case knob, position it where we want it, lock it in place. Now we just have to put the seat in. We finished the installation in this truck. We're ready to take it on a test drive. During the test drive, we will usually take these out for about an hour. We'll take it some higher speed highway driving. We actually take them part way up Beartooth Pass when the road's open to put a load under them. We take them in some stop and go driving to make sure the transmission shift operation is correct. We'll also check the shifter on the transfer case, make sure, particularly in the 92s and 93s, that the index points are correct. Then we return to the shop, check the transfer case and transmission oil levels, check for leaks, and we double check that we've tightened all the bolts. Hope you've enjoyed installing your transmission, and it's time to go.